During the heated debate between physicists of the 19th century over the nature of light and electrons, a question emerged. What are light and electrons made of? This question arose from the weird properties of light and electrons. These are the same weird properties that led scientists to erroneously categorize light as both particle and wave. We know better now that light is an electromagnetic wave. One of these weird properties became the basis for the work for which Albert Einstein famously won the Nobel Prize in Physics, the photoelectric effect. When light shines on the metal, electrons can be ejected from the surface of the metal in a phenomenon known as the photoelectric effect. Einstein realized two things when studying this phenomenon. First, if the frequency of the light is too low, no amount of light intensity will cause an electron to be removed from the metal. And second, if the frequency of the light is sufficiently high, then an electron is removed from the metal, ionization. Unfortunately, Einstein didn't really understand what was going on. It would only be once quantum mechanics was solved that we learned the reasons for Einstein's observations. First, his observation that if light's frequency is too low, then no amount of light intensity will cause ionization now makes perfect sense to us. Light is either absorbed, if there is resonance, or not. Increasing the intensity of the light does not affect the frequency, so non-resonant light will never cause electrons to be ionized. As we've seen, we can use energy diagrams to help us understand the absorption of light by electrons. Consider this diagram for the highest energy electron in a metal. The vertical arrows represent lights of different frequencies. Can light with this photon energy be absorbed by the atom? The light is not resonant with a change in the electron. We see this because it does not join the two states of the electron shown. That means that this light can never be absorbed by the electron. Even if we increase the intensity of the light, it will never be absorbed. This is what Einstein observed when the frequency of the light shining on the metal surface was too low. What about light of this frequency? Since this light is resonant with a change in the electron state, it will be absorbed, which, as we saw in a previous lesson, takes about 100,000 oscillations of the electric field of the light. The photon energy of this light is the minimum energy necessary to ionize the electron. The frequency of this light is called the threshold frequency, the minimum frequency of light that will cause ionization of the electron from the metal. What would happen if light with this frequency shines on the surface of aluminum? Take the threshold frequency of aluminum to be this, and the intensity of the light to be this many watts per square meter. Even though the intensity of the light is relatively high, the frequency of the light does not reach the minimum threshold frequency. That means that this light is not in resonance with the change in the electron, and so the light is not absorbed and the electron is not removed from the metal. What would happen if light with this frequency shines on the surface of aluminum? Take the threshold frequency of aluminum to be this, and the intensity of the light to be this many watts per square meter. So it turns out that there is something weird that happens. If the frequency of the light is greater than the threshold frequency, then it will always be resonant with a change in the electron and the electron will be ejected. This is also what Einstein observed. To understand why all light with frequency higher than the threshold frequency is absorbed, we will need to discuss more deeply the change that occurs to the electron wave during this process, and that will be a topic for a later video.